Hey there, Math Moment Makers. John here from Make Math Moments. And uh, this is another video on completing the square. This is part two of uh, the two-part series, I guess, because the last video I talked about completing the square with algebra tiles, and we showed how visual you can make that with your students uh, and how what are the steps to, to go through that. And uh, if you have not watched video one, get over there and watch uh, video one uh, right here over on the YouTube channel hit subscribe uh, over there too and uh, you'll be able to say kind of catch that completing the square video uh, over there because that we go through all of the ins and outs of, of doing that I'm gonna do a quick example of where we ended that before we get into the one with fractions today and how do you handle that with fractions but before we do get over there and subscribe to us uh, on YouTube we are uh, going regularly a couple times a week over on YouTube like we are right now also we're gonna be showing some videos over on our Facebook page so you might want to be checking that out but let's get into it uh, with the uh, algebra tiles examples here here is the first one uh, that we're gonna do right now let me get my pen tool ready to go and uh, I showed you how to, in our last video, how to kind of set this up with algebra tiles. And the idea of, remember, completing the square was you need to make a square. Like, just tell your students, make a square as best as you can with the algebra tile. So here we go. If I'm going to make a square, and now remember that we ended with yesterday was when we had a coefficient of uh, something on x squared bigger than 1 or any other number other than 1. Uh, your job is to just make that many squares. So for example, if I got 2x squared, I'm going to make two identi identical squares. And so if I've got these four x terms to distribute, I've got to use these four x terms. However, if I'm going to make two squares, I have to split those up into two. So I need to give two x tiles to each of these perfect squares that I'm going to make. I'm going to leave these singles over here to the end because I'm going to make squares. And I'm probably, like in my last video, showed you that you're not going to always use all of those to make the square. We're going to bring some in uh, to help make squares. That, as, as a teacher, if you're teaching this, you're normally, if you did this in a traditional method, you would say, okay, we're going to half this, and, and then we're going to square it, and then we're going to bring it in, and then we're going to subtract it. And kids are like, well, why do we do all those steps? If you're using a, a square to model that, you are... Uh, you are making it visual and it's clear. It's very clear uh, Why we bring things in why we have things so notice I just divided these by two That's the same as factoring the two out to look at one identical square here one square So notice I got these two X's to make a square. I've got to make it symmetric So that's where it's dividing those X terms up into two groups to put on each side I'm gonna make go this way the same length as this way. We need that length to be identical to create a square. Let me show you that length one more time here. Like we did in our last video, if this is length x and this is length 1, then this is an x plus 1 length and also this is an x plus 1 length right here. So I've just made an x plus 1 by an x plus 1 square. Uh, now I've got to complete the square by putting in, hey look, I got a little, nice little space, a 1 by 1 space. Let me bring in 1 to make that square, complete that square. However, if I got to bring in one, I got to bring in its opposite. We know that. Now I'm going to make that identical square over here because I have to make two identical squares since I had a coefficient of two here. Let me bring in one. Let me bring in its opposite to complete those squares. And notice now what I have here is I have two complete squares. Let me write the expression of what we've done because we're done. We've completed the squares here. Uh, I have two x plus 1 squares and then I have these minus 2 left over and I have minus oh to combine it with these other ones up here 1 2 3 4 5 6 combine that with minus 6 this expression is equivalent to this one right here two of those big squares and I have minus 8 left over at the end there and I've got this nice vertex form if I put a y equals in front of all that like this if I said well that was y equals and I said that was y equals I've just completed the square to turn that into the vertex form. So no, notice, remember, to make the square is the key idea. Now, what you're going to want to do is notice uh, I could have, and this is where uh, people say, like, John, but that was some easy numbers. Like, those are all... Those were all divided by two and it divided by two again. And that was really nice. I'm going to do one in a moment with fractions. But before we do, I want to show you that you could have, you could have, if you run out of tiles and where you want to move your students towards is an abstract representation. Like algebra tiles are pretty abstract to begin with, but 
I would like to move a little bit more abstract, a little bit more symbolic if I just drew one square. Like just, you can get in the habit of drawing the square and to say, hey, you know what? There's two of them. My pen tool, there we go. There's two of these big squares. I'm gonna remember that uh, when I go to build this square. And you could say, hey, look, I've got these four X terms. I'm gonna have them, uh, there's gonna be two of these squares. So I'm gonna split them in half. That means there's two X tiles to go in each square. Well, I got to put one on each side then. Okay, so I've got my x squared here. I got to put one x here and one x here. Now, I put one x. You could just say x. And that would make my square. And there's really two of these things. And there's two of those. And so this is an x plus one and an x plus one length. x plus one, x plus one, x plus one, and x, x plus one. And therefore, to complete the square, I'd have to add in one. I'd have to do that, but I'm gonna have to add in negative one to make it happen. And notice, in, everything inside this circle is like one of the squares, but I got two of them. So I, what, when I go to combine this expression, or to go to write this expression, I've got two of these x plus one squares, but I've got two minus ones because there's two of those. So I gotta put minus two. And then remember, we didn't do anything with that minus six yet and that come, came along. And notice, I could just do the same thing when I could draw it. You don't have to have the tiles. The area model, that's what we use there to represent that expression can be useful. That's what I'm gonna actually do. That's what you're gonna wanna do, move your students towards an area model so that you can do one with fractions, okay? So let's let's do this one for, for a second. I changed it slightly. Uh, you'll see here that if I created two X squareds, uh, let me just model that for you. I got two x squareds here and I have six x tiles. One, two, two, three, three. Here we go. Click, click, click. Three, four, five, six. And I need one, two, three of those things. Okay. Now you can clearly see to make my two x squareds, I would need to split these into two groups to give three here and three here. Awesome. Okay. That's going to help make, make my square. Remember, we're going to leave these because these aren't gonna help us make a square just yet. Uh, so over here, I could, uh, look at this. I could put two up here and then put one down here. That's not gonna work. That's That length is X plus two and this is X plus one. Well, if I, students are gonna be like, okay, well, if I switch it here, I get the same thing. I got rotated here. There's an X plus two and an X plus one. There's no square here. I'd have to cut, I'd have to cut this X tile in half. cut it in half and then you would have to have half an X tile here and the other half here now this is not awesome to do with tiles so this is where the drawing would come in okay so I've got two of those I'm gonna go a little lower than up there because my pen tool didn't like that high so I got two of these and I'm gonna draw a big circle and say hey, look at I got two of those inside there let me get these tiles out of the way I'm moving from the tiles into the diagram and I'm gonna draw one square, remembering that I have two of them. And I'm gonna have my square term. All right, so I know I have my one X squared here. X, that's gonna create an X length and an X length. And then I had, hey, look, I had six of them here. I gotta split it into two because I'm making two squares. So that's three, that's three per square. And then cut those into two again to make it one and a half or three halves. So I'm gonna write that's three halves X and three halves X. That's because I cut that in half because I needed to make two squares. And then that left me with three X's to split in half again to make this nice perfect square. And then you can see, look at, ah, how do, okay. This is gonna be a three halves length here and a three halves length here. We've got my squares made. Now I just have to complete it. What's gonna go in here? Well, I'm gonna have fractional values. I got three halves times three halves, that's nine quarters. And so I gotta add nine quarters and I gotta subtract nine quarters uh, in to make that perfect square. So now let me go write my perfect square. I've got two of these perfect squares, X plus three halves, that's us three halves squared. That's that square, there's two of them. And then I have to have, oh, well, I, got, I got to have uh, two of these things right here. I've gotta go, okay, well, I'm, I've got minus nine quarters, but there's two of them. So it's like I could multiply by two or subtract it twice. There's two of them. And then remember, we didn't do anything with our minus three, so we gotta subtract minus three again. So this ends up being X plus, I got X plus three halves squared. 
And then I've got this, multiplying this out, this is gonna be minus nine halves, minus three, and then, oh, okay, uh, let me go a little bit lower here. Oh, I, I don't wanna be running out of my space here. Now, I'm gonna rewrite this as, oh, well, gotta get my squared in there. This is gonna be minus nine halves, minus six halves. Here we go, here's a space over here. My final expression after I combine those fractions up uh, is minus 15 halves. Boom! I've just done it with algebra, without algebra tiles, with algebra tiles, but without algebra tiles. You don't actually need to do it with algebra tiles. Draw the area model. That is your ticket to solving or rewriting expressions in vertex form by completing the square with fractions. With fractions, folks. The visual part is the best part. Uh, now, I wanna bring your attention over to that task in my first video about completing the square. Oh, I, there, I, there's the final answer if I was out of the way, uh, is this magic rectangle task here, which is a, a problem-based task, which has, it's, it's very curious in nature. You see a rectangle changing. It's over on tapintoteamminds.com. And uh, the rectangle changes nicely, like remember that uh, uh, calculus teachers will recall and uh, algebra teachers will recall that the, these are the problems where you're maximizing or minimizing, where you're saying, hey, if I sell tickets to an event and every time I increase the price by this much, the amount of people that are gonna come is gonna decrease. Two things are changing at the same time. I wanna map. How do I, how many tickets to her? How many increases do I need to maximize my profit? That's the same problem right here, but we've just changed into a rectangle changing. Every time the width changes, the uh, length also changes. So, now, I outlined that activity in the last video. However, what I wanna show you is that when you build this, this activity with your students and your students create an algebraic expression to model it, I'm getting to that part right here. Here's the algebraic part to model it. Um, they could graph it. However, they could also learn to complete the square. So there's the expression right here. Oops, there's, there it goes. Uh, it's right, oh, there it is. It's right there. And you could complete the square to model it. And let me, you'd have to put it in standard form first. And here it comes, there it is. Let me show you how to complete the square. I'm gonna blow it up big. I'm gonna play right here. And you should be able to see this on the screen. I'm doing this live, so uh, hopefully you can see this. Uh, but this is the expression you get after you stand, you you rewrite it in standard form. But I wanna show you that even this ugly one, you can complete the square nicely with the area model. It's if you think about, uh, remember that first coefficient there is minus 10, but just think of, hey, you've got 10 x squareds, but they're like minus x squared tiles. And you can say, I'm gonna complete the square in each one of those, those are identical t uh, squared tiles. Now that's the equivalent of factoring out the minus 10, which is what teachers would teach their students if they did not show them the visualness of this problem. And so then when you factor out the minus 10, that's like looking at one square with this these tiles. That's it, you're looking at one, but there's really 10 of them after you factor, uh, factor that out. Uh, so notice you got to split, to make a perfect square with one, you have to split the remaining 16x or minus 16x tiles up into two groups so that you get this nice perfect square. So they go on each edge. So now you've got an x minus eight by an x minus eight square. Hey, what completes the square? A 64 goes in there, but you got to bring in minus 64 to go with it. And then, hey, if you combine those up, what do you get? You get that value right there. You've just completed the square and you're now ready to go and write the rest of the expression. So you've just really said there are minus 10 of those squares. So minus 10 means they're the opposite of those 10 squares. So now you've got minus 10 of those squares, but then also minus 10 of the leftover area over there. And you get this final expression in the end, which is this beautiful, this beautiful nature that you can do this with these ugly expressions or pretty expressions, is it doesn't have to be all you know, the, all, there I am, there it doesn't have to be all these perfect numbers, only if you use these visual, visual tools. All right, that's it for me in this video. Uh, remind you one more time to subscribe over here on YouTube or subscribe on Facebook. Uh, but I do want to point out, like we talked about, uh, I use algebra tiles here, which is a technical 
technical tool I use regularly in my classroom and online when I'm teaching online. Uh, but I do want to point out that uh, inside the Make Math Moments Academy, the, uh, the Academy has a full course on how to choose technology tools for your classroom. And you can get a free 30 days if you head over to makemathmoments.com forward slash academy. That's going to get you in. That's loads of time to get through that three module course on how to choose technology uh, for your course and how to use it with your students. So uh, check that out for sure. And uh, looking forward to seeing you over on Facebook or here in the comments section. But uh, thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you next time.